there is an art in war, then Hitler failed as an artist. And you can connect Archduke Franz Ferdinand to hentai. Who would win in a fight? 300 war elephants or the Alps? If you could have buried it, cremated it, thrown it away, or done anything else, but you literally decided to eat your eyeball. My hometown had the first McDonald's drive thru Now that's history. If you like listening to this podcast, then you're probably like me. Someone that in school really enjoyed one class, history. History and the lunch period. Some of you may get a little scared by the topic today, because it will feature math and science. But don't worry. If you can get past the numbers and the calculations, then you can get to the main topic of today's episode. That is the crazy beef between Leibniz and Isaac Newton, two of the greatest scientific minds to ever have existed. But the question that is posed between these two behemoths of the intellectual community is who actually created calculus first. Now this is going to be a not your daddy's history first because this is not a subject that I knew all that much about. So I brought on specialist Parker Brown. He is a local stand-up comedian in the DMV area, but he is also a big, giant nerd who likes numbers and science. So he's the perfect person to talk about this subject with me. So open up your minds, your brains, and your heads for this fantastically fun adventure between Leibniz and Isaac Newton. And remember, this is not your daddy's history. Hello, Mr. Brown. How's it going? It is a going. So this is not your daddy's history. And I have Mr. Parker Brown with me today. Ahoy, hoy. Parker Brown is a hilarious stand-up comic from the, uh, I guess, Baltimore, D.C. area. I always say that, Baltimore, D.C. area. Is that, like, the proper term for the people DMV. like us? The DMV. The DMV. D.C., Maryland, Virginia. Isn't that the place you go to get your driver's license? It It is, but oh. it's also used to describe where we live see i'm still well, i'm i'm still new to it that there's still so many nuances to living in maryland that i'm like i don't i don't know yet <laughs> i still Arizona, don't even know how to use old bay i don't even know what that is i'll tell you this next time i i'm assuming you like macaroni and cheese i do like mac and cheese I old bay one. and macaroni and cheese is one of the best like mm. pairings ever old bay maybe a little sausage a little sausage Today's episode. Oh, oh sorry. God, sausage. God damn it. That's good. See, I was trying to. I just ate, but like, thing was like, oh, macaroni and <laughs> cheese. Like, I just had macaroni and cheese uh, last night. So I'm like, I'm like, uh, don't hide the fact you want to eat macaroni and cheese right now. Dude, uh, I, I went to this oyster place for lunch with my dad, and I got three different oyster things. I got regular oysters, an oyster soup, and then a fried oyster sandwich. Oh my God. It was so I love good. oysters. And then it's, it's, and I, I can understand people's like reluctance to them, but like I love oysters. Whenever I go down south, because they're super big in Florida and stuff, really, um, I fucking go down there all the time, oh. all the time to get oysters. Well, speaking of oysters, somebody that didn't like oysters, I think was Isaac Newton, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. What a great tell me, tell me what you know about Isaac Newton. Because okay, I, so, I don't know. So let me, a ton let me about say him. this. This is going to be a different episode because you, usually when, when it comes to uh, not your daddy's history, I keep hitting the mic. Uh, when it comes to not your daddy's history, I bring on people and then I give them a subject and I'm like, hey, we're going to talk about this. And they say, okay. And then they're welcome to do research if they like to. Yeah. This episode, Mr. Parker Brown came up to me and was like, we should talk about Isaac Newton. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I know a little bit about Isaac Newton, but I don't know much. He goes, well, we should talk about him and Leibniz. And I was like, I okay, that's fine. So this is actually going to be an episode where I will learn from you, probably. Yes, hopefully. So hopefully, I'll learn Hopefully something. I remember the whole story. Yeah. I have like a little timeline thing up on my computer, but 
I don't know yeah. how much that's going to help. Because so, I think it's a really interesting story. I think I'm not yeah. a huge history guy, but I think that, and like this is, I'm a big math guy. Mm -hmm. And this is like the only good math fight in history. Right. Because it, it gets it gets a little down and dirty at some mm -hmm. point, but sorry, go ahead. Well, what do you and, what, tell me about Isaac Newton? Because I don't know too much about. So, him. like with you, where you like math but not so much history, I'm the exact same way. I hate math, but I love history. So I took this class at um, Anne Arundel Community College, local college here, that had um, it was the the history of science, right? Okay. So I, I just had to get, I had to get a science thing that actually counted for, I think, both a science and a history, or at least it counted for a science. So I was like, oh, great. I can get out of taking like a chemistry class or whatever by taking this class. Dope. And I, I, I took it. It was one of the most fascinating classes I ever took because it presented the science to me in a way that I would give a shit about, right? If you tell me why things scientifically happen or how, what, like whatever, if you tell me a math equation, I couldn't give a shit. But you tell me how that guy came up with that math equation. Yeah. I'm instantly like, well, that's fascinating. And how, so, how his wife died of mercury poisoning and shit like that. A lot of people die from mercury poisoning. That's <laughs> such a, like if I could go back in time and like do one thing, I'd probably like, go back to the earliest the guy. Mercury. Yeah. Don't eat I'd go back to like the first emperor of China <laughs> <laughs> trying to make the, the potion of immortality and it's like 80% mercury and just be like, don't do that. <laughs> Eat carrots. But that's very ironic. If someone Eat... <laughs> someone puts literal poison in their literal potion of like, youth or whatever. It makes you live forever. Yeah, yeah. It's only yeah. making your hair fall out, your teeth rot, your bones ache. But yeah, you're gonna live forever. I mean, I think I read I read somewhere that they used to use mercury, like if you were uh, constipated, you'd eat yeah. they had these mercury balls. And you'd like you pass them down throughout your family too, or yeah. wait, mercury's a liquid, so maybe it's not mercury, maybe it's lead, but it's yeah, some it super lead, toxic yeah. metal, and like you'd um you like eat them, and then they make mm -hmm. you poop, and then you have to fish them out of your poop. Yeah, no, which it's, is it's fucking terrible. It's yeah, it's it's amazing the um, it and that's what I found amazing about the class was that what I found out that science over the over the ages like. It wasn't because some guy was trying to figure something out. It was moreover because they were just trying to disprove another guy. Oh, where yeah, 100%. They like, where they were like, this guy says the earth is flat. And, the, <laughs> and then the next guy goes, that guy's a fucking idiot. I'm going to prove it's round. And then he proves it round. But then he's like, yeah, it's round and it's the center of the universe. And some other guy goes, yeah, it's not flat. It's round, but it's not the center of the universe. And like, it, it's basically and the Catholic them church one kills that guy. Somewhere. Yeah, and then the Catholic church kills a bunch of people. <laughs> it just goes insane. Well, a lot, uh, one of the most interesting things is, like, a lot of chemistry is basically from alchemy, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, like a lot of the roots of, like, the scientific method and stuff is because people seriously believed in alchemy, and they figured out, like, a lot of chemistry while they were trying to do this, like, pseudo-scientific bullshit, which is yeah. kind of cool. That'd be like studying astrology and, like, figuring out what black holes are. You know, well, like yeah. it, it's okay, but back on topic. Tell yeah. what, so, what what's your idea, of Newton? So, so what I understand from Newton. So, a really fascinating thing that I learned, right, was that th there was obviously the the period where you had the Greek philosophers, right, the natural philosophers, where they yes. basically went around and were like, "Hey, fucking trees exist, right? That's cool." And then they go, "Yeah," and then they wrote that down, and they were a philosopher, a scientist, right? Then there was the Dark Ages where a lot of people believe that there was basically no scientific discoveries. I, I, I actually did research and found that it wasn't that there was no sci scientific movement. It's just that compared to ones before and after, they were shit, right? Well, also, that's kind of like a, a European-centric view because yes, during exactly. the Dark Ages, like people in the Middle East were making oh, yeah, they, tons of especially boom. mathematical discoveries. Exactly, yeah. Like, I think the big ones were medicine and math. Yeah, that, that was in the that East. was one of the. I took both that that course on on science and a, a medieval history course. Two things I thought I was going to be super boring of, and that's like the biggest thing I took away from it. Right, yeah. was that during a time where Europeans were basically shitting themselves to death, you know, in the plague. Well, because shit, the Roman Empire the fucking, fell, though. It yeah, exactly. Yeah. There it's because the Roman Empire fell, and there like wasn't civilization anymore. You mm -hmm. know, but, but there you, was, but it just was terrible. Yeah. 
but like you had like the you had the Greek philosophers, you know, Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, yeah. all them. They were fucking amazing. And then you had like nobody of real note for like a thousand years. And then once the Crusades occurred and the Europeans went over to, to the Middle East and saw this place was booming with science and merchants and trade and all this shit. They were like, fuck, when we go back after murdering a bunch of people, we got to bring this stuff back with us. <laughs> so they did. And the thing that and the thing that the, the reason that the Middle East was doing well was because they instead of the, the church that was like saying, you know what, we don't need to listen to these pagan Greeks. They were like, no, let's listen to the Greeks and then let's go off of their ideas. So they were taking the newer age ideas with the older Greek ideas using that their same way of thinking. But it like was almost using a it in a modern way. Exactly. Or yeah. In French, a renaissance. A re a re a re a re a renaissance. Renaissance. Exactly. And so <laughs> that's and then that's why when the Europeans came back, then they were like, uh, I think one of my I, I may have mentioned this in another episode, but like one of my favorite guys, I can't remember his name right now because it's some fucking weird ass old name. But basically he looked at the Europe and was like in the church and was like you're 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 saying it's not right for people to study Socrates and Plato and Aristotle because they were pagan, but you're judging them for for not believing in Jesus before Jesus was born. Yeah. You know, it's like that's ridiculous. We should be able to listen to these people and not judge them. You know, he gave this historical context kind of thing of like you have to understand that they were before they even knew a God existed, you know, so you can't judge them for that. And and then that and then the church was like, okay, that's a good idea. And they started allowing more Greek you know, words and stuff in. And then that was when they finally started coming, popping up. So after hundreds of years of, of finally introducing old Greek classical philosophy into um, basically just thinking, <laughs> um, you finally had a renaissance in the 15th and 16th century. And that's when you get to Isaac Newton. And he's, and he's not like the first great mind since then, but like, because obviously there was other people before him. But he's like the top tier. He's like God level smart, right? Did a little bit of research. I know he was born premature. I think his mom yeah. said he could fit in like a custard jar or something. <laughs> I can't remember. Which is such a who has? Do you have a custard jar? I don't. I, have I, I would love. Jars. I would love to imagine that like his mom is where he got his like science scientific brain from. Yeah. So when she was bored, she like put him in a jar and was like, yeah, you can inside a custard jar. <laughs> Hold on. So a you, jar, not a jam jar. Do That's you remember? I, I forget this part because I did a little bit of research. How, what economic status was he born into? He was born not into royalty, but like no, he, uh, good um, economic status. So they right? were, they were well off, but yeah. they were still farmers. Like his yes. father was a farmer. And while they had money, they were just farmers. So if I remember right, he's born prematurely. He's sick mm -hmm. his entire fucking life. Like he's like yeah. a, a homebody, and that's what like led him to the sciences is because mm -hmm. his parents they'd be like he'd be like almost dying, not almost dying, but like super sick all the time. Mm -hmm. And he'd just read like textbooks basically all the time to like pass yeah. the day. Something something that I read was like yeah, like he basically was just like, I'm going to be the big boy with the big brain. Like, and that she just decided that. And that was like his pursuits. So he yeah. could have done anything else. He's like, nope, I'm just going to fucking be the smartest guy around. He was like in school and some kids were like bullying him. So instead of like getting stronger and beating them up or something or, or whatever, he instead was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to outdo you academically. Yeah, the, it's it's very... <laughs> It's very much like an anime thing where, like, the most popular kid in school is the guy with the best grades. Yeah. Like, that's how Newton thought it worked, which it, it, in Renaissance Europe, England, it definitely yeah. didn't. And I just love – I love the picture of that. that the guy's like, hey, hey, Newton, how's the farm going, farm boy? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then like, and then like <laughs> six months later – He's like in front of the class, like this is Isaac Newton. He just wrote the best paper there, and the bully's like, "God damn it, <laughs> God damn it, yeah, yeah." And the bully, Isaac Newton, you got me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although my like, essay was really good, fuck. <laughs> no, I'd probably be like he'd be reading, leading the class, and then all the other kids died of smallpox or whatever. <laughs> right. Okay, so if I remember, so he he grows up. He's mm -hmm. he's a big boy, smart brain, and he joins this society called the Royal Society, which is a group of, like, basically all the smart people in 
England. So yeah. basically in Europe at this time, as you probably learned in your history thing, like who comes up with something first is a very big deal in mm-hmm. science, right? Like, oh, yeah. they get it named after you. Um, and so, the oh, like, there really weren't, like, big public publications at the time. Mm-hmm. So they're basically, in Europe, there are two societies called the Royal Society and the French Society, right? Mm-hmm. And if something that might come into play later, if you notice, both of, both of them are in pretty Western Europe, you know, like yeah. France... And England are both in West Western Europe. Yeah. And uh, this our our big daddy, big brain guy Leibniz is from Germany, mm-hmm. right? So he, and if you look up a picture of him, he looks fucking ridiculous. It's hilarious. Mm-hmm. He he has um. If you've ever seen Peter Pan, Captain yeah. Hook, he literally has Captain Hook's like hair. It's not even. Oh, yeah. well, I mean, I, that was the classic look, the fucking stupid, yes. ridiculous wig. And also, Leibniz did, like, a ton of stuff, too. Like, both yeah. of these people at the time, you you didn't just pick one area of study. You, mm-hmm. like, did everything. Like, if you're a right. scientist, you did physics and math yeah. and, like, everything. So, Leibniz, honestly, is, like, a pretty good rival for newton like Mm -hmm. in terms of what they accomplished pretty good so what i what i want to do to paint a picture of how newton felt right is just take you on a little scene if that's okay Stephen. oh i'm gonna yeah okay so imagine this okay you're isaac newton right you have you never had sex okay because you're i can I can usually think of that. <laughs> that was so most that's of one my thing life, that's weird so that's... is is and ever like he never had like he was not interested in women or men supposedly like I don't think I read nothing that suggests he's gay. Yeah. He just is like does not give a shit, and like people at the time also think it's weird too. Well, and you like, know, because like I and I think that's something that I also learned from studying a lot of philosophers and thinkers right is that they they tended to do that a lot of them they were very uninterested like you had isaac newton you had um was tesla tesla was famously not interested in women and then uh i I read an interesting story about socrates was the same way really yeah quick quick little tangent on this one but yeah socrates was like there was this young boy that he would hang out with and the the boy was was known for being attracted to Socrates. The thing is, Socrates was known for being an ugly guy, like even yes. by their standards. He had a big bulbous nose. He had a, a gut. He had a hairy back. Like they 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 portray him as like he's not attractive. And he's a hairy old at this back. Point. Also, hairy back for a Greek person. Yeah, for too. yeah for Greek for person. a Greek person. It's basically a forest <laughs> on his back. Yeah. But because of his mind, the young boy was very attracted to him. And it was very common at that age for, you know, homosexual relationships, right? So Especially for, between like that's very much the Greek way too, yeah. is that you like, like teach this guy. young you teach this young guy and then you like later you fuck them you, you in the bathroom. Him, right? So this <laughs> young dude so fucking weird is like interested in Socrates. He's yeah. like he's like trying to hit up on him and like one day like like Socrates is like talking, just like asking questions, like trying to bounce ideas off him. And he like unrobes himself and shows himself and is like, Are you fucking ready to go down, Daddy? And Socrates just like plays him off, like, put your token back on, we're talking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like not interested at all. And people were like, like the Greeks at the time Why were like, How the fuck could you not fuck boy? this cute little twink boy? <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with you, Socrates? <laughs> So yeah, oh there's God. like a there's like a thing between like high IQ and not wanting like your dick wet. Like it's a thing. It it is it it, it is weird. It's it's probably like that's what men would be if they did, weren't interested in sex. They yeah. just become if we weren't like, horny creatures, we could we could conquer the world. Yeah. But uh, so okay, okay, okay. So you've never gotten laid. Everyone around you from what I've read, pretty much thinks you're a weirdo. And you know they think you're a weirdo. Okay. But you're also just so smart that they keep you around yeah. because shit. They, everyone just recognizes that you're, like, super smart, okay? That's why everyone's jealous of me and my intelligence. <laughs> okay, so you work for the... You, you're in the Royal Society mm-hmm. and you've spent... 
basically like 10 years keeping this thing you've invented secret okay called and you call it the nature of flux and fluxions which is a dumb name stupid yeah. name terrible stupid name. name so you finally get um you write like this incredibly prolific work yeah called the principia mathematica de philosophy naturalis or something i know it's the principia mathematica you're, uh, you can't give it a published for years because this is a really long imagination too, but whatever. Yeah, that's but fine. You can't, My eyes are still closing. You haven't been able to get it published for years because the Royal Society that you that would publish it spent all their money on a book about the history of fish. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. 100% true. <laughs> you, you, finally, you finally get it published. You walk into a bar to celebrate. You don't drink very often, but... Mm -hmm. Today's a Make special occasion. Yeah. Today's a special occasion. That's right. And you're sitting down and some guy goes, Oi, oi, lad, oi, 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 is it Newton? Uh, 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 why are you drinking? You never drink. And you go, well, well, my good friend, uh, I just published a book that uh, describes how you, uh, how you can uh, get the area under a curve and the rate of change from a function. He's like, really? That guy Leibniz published that like two years ago, and you, you just look on your face. It's oh, just hard. What? You're just horrified what? at this. What's that German How? kraut name? What the fuck? What? What? So that's basically the backstory to what happened Damn. Uh, between Leibniz and Newton. That's the back. That sets the scene. And basically, they're both going to try and say they invented calculus yeah. first. Oh. Maybe we should go over what calculus is really quick. No, no, fuck that. Okay, so before... <laughs> no, okay, we can go. <laughs> before you, uh, you're talking about the Greek philosophers, there's basically, like, people had been working on math for a certain amount of time. Yeah. You got an algebra. The first big work is by a guy named Euclid called Anything. About Geometry. And in yeah. that, they knew about, like, prime numbers... And mm -hmm. there are an infinite number of prime numbers. You can yeah. do stuff like that. And then this guy, Zeno, who's another Greek philosopher and kind of set the stage, came up with a bunch of what are called paradoxes. So basically, you can't – basically said that, like, movement was impossible mm -hmm. because you'd have to go do something an infinite amount of times. So they don't like infinities. Yeah. Then comes along Archimedes. So basically, people be, for some reason they're really they really fucking want to know the area under a curve max. That they really want to know this. Yeah. They really want to know. Um, fucking important, guys. But it's so hard. It's so hard to figure it out. Yeah. So this dude Archimedes came, comes in, big boy, big big brain, big. He's dick. another big brain. Yeah. He's another big brain. He comes in and he he makes the method of exhaustion, mm -hmm. which is basically. You divide something up into an infinite – you do a process an infinite amount of times, mm -hmm. and you get the area under a parabola. It only yeah. works for parabolas, okay? So basically all this work had gone in, all this algebra, all this stuff had happened, which set the stage for Newton and Leibniz, basically to both come up with calculus at the same time. Like that's the whole mm -hmm. thing. Who came up with calculus? They both pretty much did – at the same time. Yeah. And they actually were friends. They would like send each other math letters like, hey, can't solve this puzzle, buddy. What's two plus three? And then Newton would write back, oh, it's five. And then Newton would be like, oh, hey, what's uh three X times three X? And Leibniz would write back, oh, that's nine X squared, buddy. You know what I mean? Like they would help yeah. each other out. Yeah. So yeah. scientific minds bouncing ideas off each other. Um, so the other thing the other thing is that the Principia Mathematica is like, like, it is also like the seminal work for philosophy. Mm -hmm. I mean, for uh, physics, sorry, for physics. Yeah. So basically, it's the first book that like codifies a lot of the laws of physics that we still use to today. Mm -hmm. It's important, like, it's an amazing achievement just in its own right, but it also just so happened to be like the first work that included calculus as well yeah. you know so they get into a fight and like newton is the president i forget exactly when it happened 
So, but Newton is the president of the Royal Society. Okay. And like I said, the Royal Society. It's just a big, almost like a college. In, in like a, a club. Sense, like a club. And the uh, only and, difference and is that. The, the big man of it. If you're a scientist, the only way to like get your work published is basically to go through the Royal Society. Yeah. You know, because what I what I remember reading or studying in, in the class was that like you had, you know, b- before that in the medieval ages or whatever, if you were a scientist or a philosopher of some kind, or whatever, you would have to be- get like a patronage and yes. you'd have to like go to a castle and talk to some king and be like, hey, I'm like super smart and stuff and I could probably like make your court like really dash with like nice cool scientific shit and he was like okay cool i'll pay you to like live and uh, do your science stuff and that was essentially how like scientists got around to it and then eventually you know a bunch of the big wigs were like you know what we just need to fuck getting patronages because that's hard we should just like get one central place where we all just come in and science together and yeah jerk off or whatever because they don't fuck ladies oh also funny thing so sorry i just didn't want to forget this so you remember how mm-hmm. i talked about that book of fish yeah the book of fish so basically it had a bunch of pictures in it and like pictures at the time cost a ton of money to print yeah because like i think this is like and... before it's like right around the printing press or whatever but very yeah. hard yeah so they spend all their money and they no one buys any of these books no one bought the history of fish back it's... in like 1690 that's like i actually looked it up like some of the some of the illustrations are pretty cool so instead of like like the the president of the royal society their salary was like in today's number would be like a million dollars it was like ridiculous yeah but since they didn't have any money they started paying people in books of fish (laughs) so like your salary went from a million dollars to like a hundred fish books which i just thought was I think Hilarious. that's I think that's funny too of like of like the book came out in like the 16th century. And so it's like like did they who really thought that like we've probably seen all the fish that exist? Yeah, you know, like this no one's going down like deeper than like what like like 10 feet into the ocean. And they're yeah, like, yeah, I think we've yeah. probably found all the fish we've seen. There's like bass and like catfish. Well, I was really hoping fish. so we should like make a book. I was really hoping it would be like about like literally like fish history like the first king of the fish like <laughs> their war against you know angler fish you know no, but, um, <laughs> there was the great fish civil war so many we're lives getting, lost. we're getting we're moving right along but um so basically what happens and i don't even think there's that much left so isaac newton is the president of the royal society mm-hmm. the royal society decides who comes up with something first yeah so Uh-oh. the the Royal Society decides that Newton comes up with it first. Oh, so it's basically like how did that, they reach that conclusion? I wonder. So it's like that meme where Obama like puts a medal on Obama. Have you seen that one? <laughs> yeah. It's it's that, but it's like Newton. Like yeah, we've we've reviewed it and we've decided that mm-hmm. he comes first. And this pisses off a lot of people. Like a lot of Germans, I'm sure. We're very well. Angry. Actually, weirdly enough. Uh, you might uh you might start to see where this is going the italians oh. get mad uh bernoulli who is su- like a super big boy mathematician yeah has a couple formulas that like still use today mm-hmm. you know bernoulli's expansion like it a lot of work with probability Bernoulli is like fucking heated and he writes a letter to the royal society pretty much calling newton gay <laughs> like that's most of the letter is like, dude, you don't even fuck. Like, <laughs> like you suck. Which to an like, Italian you get, person you get, is like an insult. Like, oh. how do you not to fuck? <laughs> I understand you like the math. I like the math, but I use my math to figure out how many chicks I fuck. But it's just very, <laughs> it's very humanizing because like the Royal Society is all frilly and pompy, and they have all these weird rules and stuff, yeah. and all, all this weird stuff. And, but it's just very humanizing to have one of like the best mathematicians of all time be like, you get no bitches. Like yeah. don't <laughs> don't talk, come at my boy Leibniz because like not trying to like like disprove the theories, just being like you <laughs> they tried to personally insult the person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hilarious to it's me great. at least. 
So, Baxley, can you think of a, a time that Italy and Germany worked together on something? You know, it's on the it's on the tip of my tongue. I'm trying to think of what. Oh God, let's see. I'm trying to think. Was it? Uh, uh, you know what? It must have been like I think on like a train, like a train system. I think they were trying to put a train through through Europe. No, it was World War II. That's what it was. <laughs> That's what it was. So, I remember now. And we'll get to this in a second. A lot of historians think, or by a lot, I mean, I read two <laughs> articles on it that yeah. think that this... Saw a New Yorker article about it. So for years, Newton is like the inventor of calculus. And yeah. like Leibniz is like he did because he... Leibniz published his stuff first. Yeah. Newton probably like actually came up with it mm -hmm. a little earlier. But he didn't publish it. So like, the whole thing is like, you know, generally what's used in science is when you publish, that is when you basically, like, that's when it's said as the discovery is like mm -hmm. the year that you publish it. You can know something for 10 years and if you don't tell anybody, you know. Yeah. So Leibniz is like, dog, like, look at the publication year. Like, I came up with this stuff and Newton's like, yeah. the Royal Society are like, Nah. And I nah. I I read something doing a little bit of research for it because I mean and this is like the problem with like studying stuff like this, right? Is when when trying to look up things like like Isaac Newton versus Leibniz. Yeah. And like trying to read into it, they always eventually go into the math. Or, like, the differences between the two. Like, well, this is how Isaac Newton presented it. This is how Leibniz presented it. And then they talk about it, and that's when it loses me. Where I'm like, I don't, don't show me it. Just tell me what happened. I don't fucking well, care. part of the story, too, that's really cool, I yeah. think, is that, so basically, one of the things you learn in calculus is that um, if you have, like, how fast something is changing mm -hmm. is directly related to the area under a curve. And, like, yeah. That is a connection that's, like, really hard to get to on your own. You know what I mean? Like, no one would think about this. So, Newton studied changes, which are called derivatives. Mm -hmm. And then Leibniz studied the area under the curve. And they both realized that one is directly linked to the other, right? Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, Newton is... Um, and they both use, like, both of them, when they publish the stuff, too, have mm -hmm. a bunch of infinities and yeah. an infinitely small things called infinitesimals. So, mm -hmm. mathematicians were very critical of Leibniz when he had infinitesimals. They're like, yeah. what the fuck is this that you have left over? Basically, you do an operation and you'd be left, it would be like two, like, the result would be two plus, like, an infinitely small thing. And Leibniz mm -hmm. would be like, just ignore the infinitely small thing. And then people are like, you can't just ignore it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's real. You can't ignore it sometimes. Use it sometimes. Newton publishes this stuff, and people are just like, oh, this is brilliant. Yeah. Like, like, we do not oh. care about the What's any of the mistakes, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, it and this does make a split in the scientific community mm -hmm. between Germany mm -hmm. and england yeah because basically they're like well fuck you we'll make our own royal society and the, yeah. and the scientific communities that were kind of once held together actually mm -hmm. split a little bit because of this you know and some people think that that was part of the reason that there that a, started a lot of the divide, divide in europe. yeah in europe between you know the east and the west mm -hmm. and that I also read an article that that and like the music scenes, like yeah, where if you think of where are the two biggest music scenes in Europe in you know fifteen hundred to two thousand, mm -hmm. it's in Italy because all opera is written in Italian, yeah. and Vienna, which is yeah. in Austria, yeah. which it kind of it kind of it, it's kind of weird that you're like oh okay well that. That's why these communities felt connected to each other. Right. And England and France had the science that they thought they had a monopoly on. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, now you start to see kind of like why there might be these alliances mm -hmm. in 
Europe before Absolutely. World War One. Yeah. You know, well, and, and that and that is such a a fun train, a rabbit hole to go down. The the constant connections that people make to to things like World War One and stuff like that, and because I, I I see that all the time. Whenever you study history, whenever, you know, there's, there's a, th the thing is, there's a thousand things that historians or whatever will say, well, this possibly led to the, you know, yeah. the, the divide between people or why, you know, why Germany, you know, and hated them or whoever, fuck, whatever, like they, that, that, that exists with like everything um, uh, with it. And that's just because that's how, and this is why I love studying history and why I like trying to talk to it with other people that don't, because it's like, that's why this is interesting. It's yeah. not just a uh, World War One wasn't as simple as as this or that. It wasn't A or B. It was uh, it's years, hundreds of years of history exactly. of yeah. these people c trying to coexist, you know, and trying not to kill each other in human, you know, under the ass assumption of human nature that that's just what we do. You know, they're trying not to murder each other, but so so instead they're trying to just like coincide as best they can and you have these moments of some british guys like nah, i think my calculus is better and some german guys like hey fuck you <laughs> eat, eat, can walk through, whatever. right and then like you have that and then this all culminates into a period where like hundreds of years later these people are still fighting over fucking ridiculous shit right and it's like it's but it's it's math it's it's music it's culture yeah. it's 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 land disputes where like ah you know we owned that land 100 years ago like well it's mine now you know and then they fight over it so yeah and it, it's kind of weird so how to understand like understanding any part of history kind of helps you understand the rest you know and and yeah okay so they fight for years newton is declared the victor at the mm -hmm. time a bunch of people send letters arguing about it and it, and for me it kind of seems like the like the english were wrong like the royal society Right. Like, there was a lot of proof that Leibniz published first. There was some proof that Newton thought of it first, mm -hmm. right? But really, they made it at the same goddamn time. And right. England was just like, ah, uh, Newton won. Okay, but, okay, but, actually, before today, did you know about flux and fluxions? Have you ever heard that? I heard of that before. Of course, I know about it. I'm just wondering if you do. <laughs> no, but for real, did, have you ever heard that phrase before? I mean, I've I've heard flux. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know more what calculus is? Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I just guess you called thing. it cal calculus. Leibniz. Leib. Okay. Yeah. And all all of the like notation mm -hmm. they used two different sets of notation like two different ways of expressing stuff yeah we still use leibniz's notation nobody uses newton's notation because it's stupid. yeah <laughs> so in a in a way like newton won at the time but yeah. to this day who really is the king of calculus it's it's leibniz, it's, leibniz. it's it's yeah. It's the, it's, we still use all this stuff. We call it calculus, mm -hmm. which means little rock. It means a little pebble. Nice. Well, uh, which, because like the whole thing is, that which you is use, what like, you feel is in your brain when you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you're me, Bex. I've mastered, oh, mastered integral and differential calculus oh, okay. at a young age. And so basically who really won? I think it's Leibniz. I think Leibniz won at the end yeah. of the day. He got it the last laugh. If he came today, he'd like see calculus. He'd be like, that's that's my calculus. If Newton saw it, he'd be like, mm -hmm. why aren't you using my notation? Also, Leibniz fucked too. He did. So. Yeah, he he actually got his dick wet, which is so. I think I mean, that's another. I think win. that means there's two winners. There's Leibniz and the ladies that he fucked. Exactly. So and and Leibniz also helped invent. The computer in a weird way he oh because the the math led to it so no completely different computers don't use calculus he made the first uh, mac computer <laughs> <laughs> he did um so yeah that's kind of the story of the the fight wow bernoulli coming out hot i did not expect i yeah. did not expect like when i started looking into this i'd heard about it before mm -hmm. but when I finally watched a couple of videos on it, and I did not expect like Bernoulli to come out and be like, because I knew the name Bernoulli, mm -hmm. I did not expect him to be. I think that's the funniest part is him being like, 
Newton does not have sex, therefore he is wrong. Like, Newton's that's just something spirit. hilarious for a mathematician yeah. to say. Well, well that is that, but too, like an old one. You know, yes. it's like, this is a guy, this is the 1600s this is occurring in. There's some Almost, 1600s yeah. guy going, this guy doesn't fuck. <laughs> what a fucking bitch! What a what a loser! Basically, calling a uh, Isaac Newton a nerd, which like is also very true. Isaac Newton was very much like the stereotypical nerd, socially awkward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, people all thought he was a weirdo, petty, petty as fuck, too. petty. Because I I know one story was like uh, there was there was this guy Robert Hook in the in yeah. the scientific society. And Oak's when law. when he wrote his when he when he wrote the book about optics, or I think it was optics, but it was something. He wrote something, and well, fucking was Hook big was, on like, springs. was like, Hook "Yo, was your big fucking on... uh, your fucking book is stupid, Isaac." And then <laughs> and then he's like, "Really, you're gonna fucking say that?" So he left the society and waited until Robert Hook died, and then joined back. He's like, "Well, this fucker's alive. I'm not coming back." And all the scientists were like, "No, please come back. You're really smart. We want to like hear more of your shit." But he's like, no, nah, that guy said something about me, so fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> well, the whole Royal Society, too, yeah. I've read some stories about them. It yeah. all was very, like, weird. It was mm-hmm. basically like a bunch of dudes kind of being gay together. Like, there was a lot of gay stuff. Like, they, they like, prank each other by, like, showing each other their bare asses, <laughs> which is, like, kind of funny, but kind of, like, gay. You know? I think it's funny if you think about the clothing they wore at the time. Yes, you know, that yeah. showing a bare ass wasn't easy. <laughs> you had to like undo like ten different like articles of clothing to get your ass out. But they they'd also have weird parties where they like dress up like women and stuff, which I know yeah. was like a thing people used to do more, but mm. very check it out these cheeks, ye bitch. Yeah. Very uh oh, and Newton too, I think hated Shakespeare for some reason. I forget why. I'm like, how are you going to hate smart. Shakespeare? Right. How you how you how are you going to hate Shakespeare? I know um, we have to end this soon, so I know uh, I'll I'll send you the link. There's a fantastic story of him too, where uh, Isaac Newton was the head of the mint in in England when yeah. he like when it got started because they were trying to like create coins that couldn't be fucked with basically or, um, or recreate or, or recreated. like recreated or um what it was is that they were doing this thing called trimming where they would take a coin that was minted and then they would trim off like the extra part of it that like was out of the the actual stamp basically of the coin okay and then if you did that enough then you could eventually create your own coin right uh. like you're just basically snipping the extra part and then if you kept doing that eventually had your own so then they created a new mint machine that created coins that couldn't be duplicated. And that's and that's why coins now have edges. That's basically what it is. It added edges to the coin to make them all u- universal. Well, there was this dude who was like a con man, and he decided to con the, the mint. And he basically went toe-to-toe with Isaac Newton. So you have like this, this con man versus the smartest man in Europe. <laughs> Story. It's fantastic. There's a there's a video for anyone. Uh, I always suggest watching it. It's Puppet History. This guy he puts on like a little puppet show about history, but you know it's fun and there's there's fun yeah. skits and stuff like that. Fantastic show, wonderful. But they they do they do an episode on it. It's and amazing. The, it's so funny. The, the final thing I'll say is this set the stage. If you ever want to do another math one, this the next the next big mathematician to come out was Euler, who is like far and away the like best mathematician of all time like yeah. it's not even close he euler came up with invented discovered so much math that they had to stop naming stuff after him <laughs> and basically the rule was like if you invented it a different way after euler it would yeah. get named you would get it would be named after you because wow. he just was such a big daddy big daddy smart boy guy, like yeah. literally like pro- like i think probably the smartest m- maybe not the smartest but like the best scientist of all mm-hmm. time you know okay. if yeah. you ever want to do another episode Absolutely. he's he would he would be a good subject to talk about because oh. guess what the difference between him and newton was did the other guy fuck yeah he fucked. Yeah, yeah that's what i like to hear all you right, well, Parker them. Brown, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank uh, you, Stephen. This has been not your daddy's history. We have been talking a lot about math, but don't worry. We, we won't do math ever again. 
<laughs> Joe, awesome. we'll, we'll, we'll do it again later. Thank you so much for coming on, Parker Brown. And remember, Thanks, this Steven. is not your daddy's history.